hi there welcome back so in this video tutorial i am gonna quickly show you how to create a hibernate hello world application which will connect to mysql database all right so hibernate is one of the you know popular java persistent framework and it is an open source so uh, hibernate provides the implementation for java persistent api specification and uh, it is a ORM tool uh, it provides a framework for you know mapping uh, application domain model to uh, database tables and vice versa all right and uh, you can check out uh, if you want to learn more about how to hibernate then you can just uh, click on this back to hibernate tutorial button uh, you will be navigate to this uh, hibernate tutorial so here i have written you know a lot of hibernate related articles and published on my website so you can just go through it if you want to learn more about hibernate Anyway, I'm going to create a uh, video tutorials on all these Hibernate uh, write-up tutorials. So you can also subscribe to this video, YouTube channel so that uh, whenever I will publish this Hibernate tutorials, uh, you will get notified. All right. So here is a, uh, let's have a look into this diagram over here. So here at a, uh, here you can see this is the student Java class and here is a student table. So the the mapping between java class and the table is uh, you know performed by hibernate ORM mapping all right so this is a bi-directional uh, st student we can we can you know uh, map student to the table and table with the student so basically hibernate provides a feature to create a table directly in a database so we no need to manually create a table in a database so we can just provide a gp annotations uh, uh, in a uh, in a you know Java class, then we are able to map a Java class with a table. All right. So let's have a look into what are the tools and technologies that we'll be using. So we'll use Hibernate 5 plus 5.3.7, and uh, we use IDE as Eclipse. So we'll be using Eclipse IDE in order to develop this Hibernate uh, Hello World application. And here are the development steps that we need to follow in order to create this uh, Hibernate Hello World application. <coughs> all right. So I made this tutorial very easy in order to specifying all these development steps. What we have to do is we need to just follow these development steps so that to, we are able to you know successfully create this Hibernate Hello World application. All right, guys. I will show you. Uh, you know, uh, let's implement this development step one one by one, and uh, we'll see. Uh, you know successful implementation of this uh, application and finally we, we see we run the application and we see the demo all right <coughs> let's go and let's follow the steps so first step is uh, we need to create a simple mind project and then we create a project packaging structure and we all uh, we add all the Maven dependencies to the public symbol and we create a jp entity and we create a hibernate configuration file uh, using xml base and we'll create a, a hibernate utility class uh, which will provide a session factory object and we finally create a main class and we will run the main class uh, application all right all right guys uh, let's implement these steps one by one so first step is we create a simple Maven project let's go ahead and let's open uh, your eclipse id so i am going to also open eclipse id in my machine so what uh, so you can just uh, you know start coding with me so that uh, you can you can easily you know implement this uh, tutorial let's go ahead and let's open the eclipse id so here i am in a eclipse id and in order to create a simple mind project just go to the file new and go to the others so if you don't find marvin over here just go to the others just type marvin and choose marvin project all right and tick, click on create a simple mind project and here we need to enter group id and artifact id all right so here you can refer this screenshot in order to provide uh, details to the project let's give a name as a hibernate hello world example let's so actually we need to give a, a application name here so let's uh, give hibernate uh, hello world example as artifact id and group id as a net.java guides all right 
and you can give you can provide a name and description for this project and i will give name and description as same as project name so once uh, you are happy with the uh, details then you can just uh, hit uh, finish button so here we go so this is the very simple marvin project and next step is we need to add a marvin dependencies to the form.xml all right so if you can observe here by whenever we create a simple marvin project by default it will configure with the uh, you know java 1.5 let's change it to jdk 1.8 all right so let's go to the build path configure build path let's change from 1.5 to 1.8 all right perfect right let's also change the java compiler version uh, if you can observe here it is by default it is 1.5 let's change it from 1.8 you can use java 11 or java 10 or whatever the version you have installed in your machine all right so next step is we need to provide our dependencies let's reuse this code all right let's uh, paste here so here you can observe uh, we need to provide mysql as well as hibernate core uh, dependencies so so here you can see this is a mysql connector uh, uh, you know dependency in, in order to work with mysql and this is the hibernate core dependency so these uh, two dependencies dependencies are end up in order to create this hibernate uh, load application next step is we need to create a jp entity so if you can observe here whenever you create a java uh, persistent api entity or jp entity class then you should need to follow these four rules so the first rule is uh, if you whenever you create a java class or a jp entity class it should have a default constructor so if you don't create a default constructor then by default compiler will uh, create a default constructor for you so when you define a parameterized constructor in your jp entity class then you need to manually provide a default constructor all right make sure that you have a you know a no argument or default constructor and you need to provide a id property in your jp entity class because the id property is ultimately becomes a primary key in a database and you need to declare a getter setter methods because Hibernate recognizes the method by getter setter methods by default. So try to prepare a non final class. Don't make a JP entity class as a final because Hibernate uses a concept of proxies and that depends on persistent class. Perfect, right? So just follow these four rules in order to whenever you create a JP entity class. Let's go ahead and let's create a student JP entity class before that let's create a packaging structure so observe the here you can refer this screenshot and you can create a packaging structure all right right click here package and type here net.java guides dot hibernate is our package name and let's create an entity as a sub package just type dot entity so here is the entity package let's create one more package and name it as dot util all right so right click on entity package i uh, will create a persistent class let's name it this class as a student all right and let's uh, use code from my write-up tutorial so instead of writing line by line code you can just uh, use it so that you can save your time just paste it here Have a look into this student uh, JP entity class. So, this so student is a plain Java class and it is annotated with at entity annotation. So, at entity annotation, I uh, just uh, we need to use in order to make this student class as a persistent class. And here we are using at table annotation in order to provide a table details. And we are mapping student Java class with this table. Alright, now in our case student is the table name. 
we can also provide a schema name and also description for this table by using add table annotation and here we are using add id annotation in order to uh, you know uh, in order to map a primary key uh, in order to create a primary key uh, for a database table so in this case this id becomes a primary key all right and here we are using add generated value in order to uh, in order to specify a primary key generation strategy for this you know this id and here we are using add column annotation in order to map a database table column name to the uh, class property all right so pretty simple jp annotations we need to use whenever we you know create a java class and notice here we, we are using parameterized constructor so whenever you create a parameter constructor then you also need to create a no argument constructor and you need to also provide a getter setter methods over here right so you need to you know follow four rules that i have provided these are the four rules you need to follow whenever you create a jp entity perfect right next step is we need to create a habernate configuration file it, uh, we create this uh, Hibernate configuration file under resources folder. Before that, this Hibernate configuration file contains information about a database sign mapping file. And conventionally, its name should be hibernate.cfg.xml. Perfect, right? Let's go ahead and let's create this file and we'll see. Right click on the resources, go to the other type xml so here is xml file let's name it as hibernate config.xml and let's reuse this code this configuration file contains a database information as well as mapping the files perfect right let us see have a look into the uh, next step we need to create a helper class to bootstrap a hibernate session factory all right so session factory is a thread shape and can be shared so so session factory is it provides a factory of session objects let's go ahead and let's create this uh, hibernate util class and we'll walk through the source code as well so right click on util package name this class as a hibernate util and just use this code Perfect, right? So, notice here, so we are creating a single instance of the same factory, and it is a thread shape, and it can be shareable across uh, the application. So, if you can notice here, we are creating a session factory object by using Java Java code over here. So, we are we are creating first we will create a registry. And we create a metadata resources, and we create a metadata, and finally, from the met metadata provides, a, you know, a get session factory builder or API, and through which we can build the session factory object. And here we are returning. So if you can notice here, we are using factory uh, design pattern in order to create this session factory object. So we are maintaining a single instance of session factory. Perfect, right? So when we call shutdown method, it, no, the this uh, registry will be destroyed and internally session factory object will also be destroyed. All right. Let's create a main class and let's test this application. Right click new class and let's change the package here. And let's uh, reuse this code. perfect right so this is the application class it has a main method so we can run this this project as a standalone because uh, it has a main method and this is a starting point of our application so if you can notice here we have we are we have created two student objects and we are we are you know storing these two objects in a database perfect right so here if you can notice uh, we are getting a session factory object from the Hibernate utils that we just gone through it. 
and happen a session factory uh, provides a session object and if you can see here uh, we, are, we need to start a transaction using begin transaction method and uh, within this transaction we need to save the student objects once we save the student object using save method we then need to commit the transaction so if there are any exceptions occur within this try block then we need to roll back the transaction perfect right and if you can notice here we can also retrieve students from the database by using uh, uh, create query api all right so if you can notice here again we are creating one more session session object and we are using hibernate uh, query language uh, this is the you know hbo statement and it is an independent of databases so we, we, we prepared to use hhl hibernate query language and we are iterating list of students from the database and we are just iterating and we are printing on the console it's pretty simple application class let's go ahead and let's run this uh, application now So if you can notice here, uh, we have provided we have provided drop and recreate database schema on startup. All right. So this is a hibernate to DDL dot auto. This is the property, and the value for this property is create hyphen drop. It means that it will drop uh, the table if uh, present in a database. On a startup and then it will create a fresh table into a database and if you can notice here on the console the same thing is printed so it will first drop the table if it exists the name of the table is student and once it will drop then it will create a new table all right and here we are inserting two student records in a database so if you can notice here in a in an app class we have created two student objects and we have persist this student two student object in a database this uh, sql statement will be printed on the console by using hibernate uh, properties so here we have specified show sql cook true that's why we have, uh, the sql statements are printed on the console and the post uh, this is the record we have printed for example in app dot uh, java class here we have you know fetch we have retrieved a list of students and here we have printed post name of the student and this is how it is printed on the console so this is typically we create a hello world uh, you know hibernate application so what we have done so far we have created a simple maven project and we have you know added all the maven dependencies to pomlo.xml and we have created a packaging structure we have created a, a jpa entity class that is a student class and we also created a hibernate configuration class which which creates a session factory object and uh, it contains uh, hyper, uh, database related information as well as mapping uh, file information and we have created a hibernate util class in order to maintain a session factory object as a single uh, throughout the application and finally we created a you know driver clause or the app clause and inside that we have created a student's object and we have saved that student object to the database and we successfully deploy this uh, we successfully run this uh, hibernate hello application and we have seen the uh, demo all right all right guys i hope uh, you understand how to create a hibernate hello application so i am going to create a more uh, video videos on a hibernate framework so if you can so if you can subscribe you will be notified all right all right guys i will see you in the next video with lot of you know good tutorials